Good morning. Uh, maraming salamat sa organizers sa pag-imbita. Baka pagbahagi ng uh, ilan sa resulta ng mga trabaho ang ginagawa namin sa UP. Um, when the letter of invitation was sent to me, I was given a choice on the topic that I can share with you. And I chose a topic that would allow us to look at the past, but also look at the present and look at the future. I think that's a theme that has moved on from the welcome address to the uh, uh, keynote speech. And I would like to maintain that as well. Um, Tingnan natin ngayon yung pagbabago sa klima na isang bagay na mahalaga para sa mga naglalayag. Kanina lang, kausap ko si uh, uh, Mr. Valdez at sabi niya, iba na ang dagat ngayon. Parang mas malalakas ang hangin, mas maalon. Well, tingnan natin, ano nga ba yung mga pagbabago sa klima at ano ang epekto nun dito sa atin bilang isang bansa na tradisyon ang paglalayag. So, the title is Trends of Climate Change in the Philippines. Focus on the Philippines. Some possible impacts to the maritime industry. Marahil ay familiar itong figure na ito para sa uh, sa inyo. Pinapakita nito, ano yung pagbabago sa global average ng air temperature through time. And what we have from the 18, 1880s to year 2000, at ang tinitingnan dito bale ay nakaplat na siya as anomaly of departure from the normal temperature. And it shows that through time, ang init ng dagat, nagbabago din ang weather patterns. At dito sa Pilipinas, tingnan natin ano yung pagbabago sa rainfall patterns at ano ang pagbabago sa mga bagyo. This is combined data from ship-based observations to acquire information about the ocean. May mga gamit, instrumento na ibinababa ay on board bali habang umaandar na kumukuha ng salinity information about the ocean but the information is temperature and data from the 1900 to sometime in the 1990s na nakalagay dito that sea surface temperature merong dato na galing bale sa Beacon Shelf and that's the upper right panel and then from the South China Sea side, that's the upper left panel, Surigao, and then Sulu Sea. And if you look at all of this data, no, lahat ito ipinapakita na yung sea surface temperature ay tumataas. Roughly by about 1.5 degrees centigrade over a period of about 100 years. Now, pwede sabihin, Ang liit lang naman pala. Ang liit lang naman pala. But that's the average. If you now look at the annual fluctuations, you get this very large annual fluctuations riding on top of that overall rise of temperature. Um, may nakalabel dyan na IGOS SST, that's satellite data. COADS, that's ship-based data. You combine the two and you get the overall trend of increase in sea surface temperature through time. You combine all of the data from the rest of the world, and you get this, yung kulay pula, yun yung tumaas ang temperatura ng dagat, yung kulay blue, na konting-konti lang yung makikita mo, it's only in the uppermost central area, in the Atlantic where you get that, that's due to the melting of ice masses bringing in cold water into the ocean. But the rest of the ocean, most of the ocean, has undergone warming. 
Ano ang isang consequence ng pag-init ng dagat? Ang isang consequence nito ay yung pagdami ng tinatawag natin na harmful algal blooms. O kung minsan, mas kilala natin sa tawag na red tide. But not all harmful algal blooms give a red coloration. Na yung iba ay kulay brown, yung iba ay green. Ang Manila Bay sa ngayon ay kulay green. Um, years ago, madaming red tide dito sa Manila Bay. Sa ngayon ay hindi na, pero lagi na lang mataas ang plankton concentration. Yun yung nagbibigay ng kulay green na kulay dito sa Manila Bay. Ang tawag sa mga blooms na ito ay harmful algal bloom. Bakit harmful? One, some of these blooms, they give off toxic substances. At yung toxic substance na ito, kapag na-ingest ng tao, pwedeng meron kang paralysis, pwedeng magkaroon ka ng amnesia, yung pinaka uh, hindi masyadong malaki yung problema, magtatai ka. But some of this can lead to death. Yung iba, maski man hindi, maski walang lason, because of the very high concentration of plankton, mamatay sila, lulubog sila sa tubig, and the process of decay would set in, utilizing the oxygen in the water column, leading to what we call hypoxia, or even worse, what we call anoxia. Walang oxygen sa tubig, ang mga isda ay hindi makakahinga, that will resolve to fish kill. Warming ocean, mas dumadami itong harmful algal blooms. And that is true for many countries kasama bale ang Pilipinas. This is compilation of all of the harmful algal blooms in the country that was done by Elsa Furio in 2003. Ngayon, 2018, 15 years after, Madami pang data points na pwede kang idagdag dyan. Overall, ang trend bale, lumawak ang coverage ng harm harmful algal blooms at naging mas frequent siya sa maraming lugar. This is work that we did in Manila Bay. Yung organism na ang tawag ay dinoflagellate, maliliit sila. No, plankton sila. Sila bale yung uh, uh, specifically, yung tinignan namin ang tawag sa kanya ay pyrodinium. They produce a cyst. Para siyang buto. Uh, matibay siya sa water column, matibay siya sa, sa sediment. Hindi siya madaling mabulok. It takes time. A very long uh, uh, time. Thousands of years, in fact. It can survive in the sediments. Tinignan namin, ano ang dami nitong cyst na ito sa sediments through time. And doon sa gitna na graph, that's the cyst count through time, we can date the sediments. There are ways of age dating the sediments. So we would know anong taon na deposit yung sediment. So then we can re reconstruct through time kung ano yung dami ng cyst. And in the middle graph, we see an overall increase in the cyst. Dumadami yung... Uh, concentration ng pyrodinium sa sediment column or sa water column through time. At nakorelate namin ito sa dami ng phosphorus. Phosphorus, isa yan sa inilalabas ng mga ilog sa Manila Bay. Galing ito, halimbawa, sa sabon na ginagamit natin o kaya sa fertilizer. At kapag ito ay dumadami, gusto yon ng plankton, kaya sila dumadami. Bahagi ito, nung pangangailangan nila para sila ay mabuhay. Yung panghuli na graph, that sea surface temperature for Manila Bay. This is based on satellite data. And we can also see an overall increase in the sea surface temperature dito lang sa harapan natin sa Manila Bay. And overall, that is consistent with the relationship that with warming water, increasing eutrophication, there will be an increase in phytoplankton blooms. Ito ay times 
halos 500 times na magnification sa microscope mga itsura ng mga cyst na nakikita namin sa sediment. Na-identify namin siya, kaya pwede namin siyang mabilang, ma masasabi pa paano yung pagbabago sa dami nila through time. Well, the trend is, in many coastal areas, and in, in the Philippines, it's almost all coastal areas of the Philippines, is undergoing eutrophication. There is an increase in the input of nutrients, there is an, it, an increase in the, the blooms of all of these uh, phytoplanktons. And then you combine that with the warming of the ocean. Hindi sila magandang combination. Ano ang relasyon nun sa maritime industry? One ang nasa water column at the time when the water was sucked in for ballast they would also be the same organisms that would go out when you discharge the water. Noon pa man, kasama na bale sa redistribution of organisms, yung paglalayag, kumakapit sa hal at doon sa ballast water, but from one boat coming from Spain, going to the Philippines, abay may mga walang pamasahe, libre lang sila, pero pwede na silang bumaba kahit saan nila gusto. At dahil dito, nagbabago-bago din yung patterns ng biodiversity. Noon pa man nangyayari na yan, pero ngayon, nangyayari pa din, at Nag-uumpisa ba rin na makita natin yung pagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin na invasive species. And we don't want that. So, ano ang pwede nating gawin? Dahil sa nagiging mas frequent, mas madami, ang harmful algal blooms, kailangan mas maingat tayo sa management ng ballast water. There are protocols that were agreed upon way back in 84. Merong mga bagong protocol na kailangan nating sundin. Na-ratify lang nitong 2017. Okay? Ay, sundin natin kung ano yung mga napagkasunduan. Kasi kung susundin natin ito, mababawasan yung paglipat-lipat ng mga undesirable organisms. Marami nang na-document na galing sa isang lugar, napunta sa isang lugar, at doon dumami at hindi makontrol yung kanilang pagdami. Alin ang, ang mga ilang halimbawa? Nakalabel doon sa upper uh, left side, dinoflagellate. That's uh, a cause of harmful algal bloom. Ito ay kamag-anak ng tinatawag namin na pyridinium. Then you have this jellyfish in the lower left. Okay? Um, at marami pang iba. 12 billion tons of ballast water per year gets moved around in the world. At doon sa ballast water na yon, you have 3,000 to 4,000 species na inililipat-lipat sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo. Yon yung impact no? ng maritime ministry. Makakatulong tayo kung yung ballast water na ginagamit natin mayroon certain protocols na susundin. Well, there are some precautionary measures that can be observed. Huwag kang mag-discharge ng ballast water kapag nasa harbor ka. Huwag okay. no uptake of ballast water in areas, na shallow water, in dredging areas, in known infected areas, in areas with known phytoplankton blooms, or in areas with sewage outfalls. Let me move on to the next topic, which is sea level rise. Ang pagtaas ng dagat. Global picture, yung kulay pula, tumataas ang dagat. Yung more on the green and the blue side, bumababa ang dagat. Pangkalahatan, globally, ano yung scenario? Tumataas ang dagat. Nasaan ang Pilipinas? Nandun sa central part, nandun sa sa lugar na may mga kulay pula. 
Ano yung mga kulay pula dito sa image na ito? That's between 6 to 9 millimeters per year rise of sea level. Zoom in tayo sa Pilipinas. This is what we, we got. We downloaded data, satellite data. Sinusukat ng satellites yung pagtaas pagbaba ng dagat. Okay, through time. And this is the result. Um, the numbers that you see there are in millimeters per year. And if you look at the whole area of the Philippines, it's telling us that sea level is rising at the rate of anywhere from 6 millimeters to 8 millimeters per year for the period uh, 1993 to 2009. Merong dato at may trabaho na tumingin sa in more recent times, 2000 to 2014, tiningnan yon mas mabilis yung rate of rise kaysa sa nakalagay dito. Ang rate of rise from 2000 to 2014 is 1.4 centimeters per year. O pwede nyo sabihin, maliit lang yon. O kung ikaw ay nakatira sa tabi ng dagat, and after 30 years, tumaas ng 30 centimetro ang dagat, Ano ang mangyayari sa property mo kung ikaw ay nakatira sa tabi ng dagat? Pwede kang pasukin ng alon, pwede kang pasukin ng tubig dagat, pwedeng matanggal yung property mo kasi ma-erode siya. Oh, the sea, sea level rise is not continuous. Sea level rise it goes up and down, goes up and down. Sinusunod niya bali yung tinatawag natin na El Nino, Southern Oscillation. During El Nino, yung dry period, sea level is low. But during La Nina, sea level goes up. But the El Nino and Southern Oscillation cycles, they're also riding on top of what we call the Pacific Decade of Oscillation. Mas mahaba yung cycle na yon, 30 to 60 years. But overall, kung titingnan mo yung suma total, this is for Verde Island, Boracay, and for Camigin, all sea level is rising. Kahit saan ka sa Pilipinas, ang dagat, suma total over the years, tumataas siya. This is Manila Bay for the period 1993 to 2009. Yung kulay pula, that's based on tide gauge data. Yung blue, that's based on satellite data. Alin ang mas steep ang curve? Mapapansin ninyo, I cannot get this to work. Ayan, nakikita pala. So yung kulay pula, that's tide gauge. Yung kulay blue, that's satellite data. Alin ang mas matarik or steep ang slope? Yung tide. Ang nasusukat ng satellite ay yun lang mismo ang pagtaas pagbaba ng dagat. Ang nasusukat ng tide, pagtaas pagbaba ng dagat at pati yung paggalaw ng lupa. So sea level but at the same time, the land is sinking in Manila Bay. But it's not just in Manila Bay, it's actually the entire Metro Manila. This is ang lahat ng uh, tuldok dyan. Those are benchmarks used by Namria to look at elevation. They have elevation data in 1978 and they have elevation data in 2000. Pinalikan nila yung bale. And the numbers that you're seeing there, yun yung pagkakaiba sa taas nung benchmark from, nine, from 1978 to, to 2000. The numbers should be in negative. Ibig sabihin, lumubog ang mga benchmarks sa buong Metro Manila. Ang pinakamataas na paglubog ay sa bahagi ng Kalookan o yung matandang Metro Manila, which is Manila. Okay? When... Maximum rate is in Kalookan, 6.1 centimeters per year. Mabilis po ito, no? hindi ito mabagal. Um, tiningnan namin, ito ba ay sanghi ng geology underneath? Ito ba ay dahil sa bato? Well, you can see yung kulay matingkad na dilaw, adobe, mahirap siyang 
mapipit. Yung light na dilaw, those are muddy sediments. It's much easier to compress them. But you can see that if you move across from hard material to soft material, you get the same behavior. The land went down. Pataan. The photo was taken in 1998. Walang ulan, high tide lang ito bale. At dumating kami pababa na yung high tide. Ito ay uh, ad, um, bagsakan ng isda. Nung nagpunta kami dito, akala ko design niya talaga ito para maipasok yung mga bangka, i-unload yung isda. Hindi pala. Ang sabi ng mga tiga dito, hindi ho. Nung pong ginawa ito, hindi ito inaabot ng high tide. Tandaan po na, wala pong ulan dito nun. Ito ay tubig dagat na pumasok doon mismo sa facility ng pagsakan ng isda. Well, bakit siya pinasok ng dagat? Dahil, una, tumataas ang dagat by itself, but the land is also going down. So you combine the two, the net change is much larger. One consequence of sea level rise is coastal erosion. This photo was taken in El Nido. Um, Mga natumbang puno kasi may bagyong dumaan. Pero bakit sila natumba? Natanggal ang buhangin na kinatatayuan nila. At nagtulong bale ang bagyo at ang pagtaas ng dagat. Anywhere you go, if sea level goes up, erosion will take place. This is in Cagayan de Oro. May bahay na nasa tabi ng dagat. Inabandon na siya kasi na-erode na yung buhanginan sa harapan niya. And the work that we're doing in the Philippines nagdo-dominate ang coastal erosion sa maraming lugar sa Pilipinas. And one contributing factor is the rise of sea level. This is the port area of Manila. This is the biggest port in the Philippines. Imagine natin, ano ang mangyayari dito sa port area na ito? Itaas mo ang dagat ilubog mo ang lupa. And you can think of this for any port facility in the country. Because sea level is rising everywhere in the Philippines. And most of the ports are built on delta plain areas. And deltas, they undergo natural compaction. And deltas are populated, and in deltas we extract groundwater, and therefore we enhance subsidence. Bang bagat na nagtutulong para maging mas malaki yung parang pagtaas ng dagat. O isipin natin paglubog ng ating port facilities. I will go back to that later. But tingnan natin itong mga pagbabago sa ulan at saka sa bagyo. I have five minutes. Ondoy, pinaha tayo. Isang dahilan dahil napakatindi ng ulan. Uh, this is data from Manila Observatory. Uh, ang normal rainfall based on a 30-year average for the month of September. Tatlongpong taon na dato sa bawat buwan ng Setyembre ang dami ng ulan. Yung average bale nasa sa 330.3 millimeters lamang. Isang event lang on Doi delivered more than 500 millimeters of rain. And this pattern is becoming more common. Hindi na ito unusual, kaya madami ng uh, sudden na floods kasi intense yung delivery rainfall. This is from the work of Jen Gemma Narisma. What she did was to look at rainfall on a daily basis that is greater than 350 millimeters. Tiningnan 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000. Tingnan nyo lang yung kulay pula, yung last na bar graph. Pula 1960s, mababa. 70s, tumas ng konti. Yung pula 80s, mababa. Tingnan nyo yung sa 2000, tumas na siya. Kung isasama natin dyan yung 2010 forward, mas mataas pa yung kulay pula. What it's telling us is that the rains are becoming more intense. And the drainage systems that we have are not built for such types of rainfall. The ports will also be flooded.
More intense rains will result to flash floods in river systems. Intense rains and flash floods are very efficient in eroding the soil. And they can then bring in a lot of sediments into the coastal areas. In this photo, this is Pasig River. And you see a brownish area. Lahat yon ay sediment. Lahat yon ay putik galing sa Marikina River. Saan pupunta ang putik na yan? Ang ilan ay makakalabas ng Manila Bay, pero karamihan dyan, it will just settle down within the mouth of Pasig River. And what's at the mouth of the Pasig River? Nandun ang ating port facilities. We looked at changes in the water depth, yung bathymetry, dito sa area na to. We looked at a map, 1945, produced by the U.S. Army. Itong rightmost, nasa left din yung bale. Yung nasa gitna, that's 1961. Yung pinaghambing sila, tinignan namin yung difference, yun na bale yung nasa kanan ninyo. The numbers that you're seeing there, merong number one, merong four, may three, and most of them are are in one. Ito four. Ano uh, nangyari? Support area ng mga isang metro. But with a change in the rainfall patterns, then we would expect the sedimentation rates will become even faster. This is Batangas Port. Uh, Batangas Port, uh, dito siya, this is a, a river system and may tinatawag na longshore current. The longshore current in this area that's generated by waves, it's bringing in sediments from the river mouth to the port area. Well, ano ang mangyayari? Kapag dinala mo yung putik doon sa port area, bababaw ang iyong port. Hindi na makakadaong ang iyong malalaking barko. But the other consequence of that structure being there, masusut ang sediment dito, hindi makakapunta ang sediment dito kung kaya naman yung mga lugar na yon ay nag-erode na. Bagyo, madaming bagyo na natatanggap ang Pilipinas. Ang Pilipinas ang may ang record holder sa dami ng bagyo na natatanggap kada taon. Tayo yon. It has been like that in the past and ganyan pa din hanggang sa ngayon. But we are, we have to take pride with our heritage. It's the fact that we have survived this scenario. Despite the fact that there are so many natural disasters in the country, we have survived and flourished as a nation. <coughs> ang dami na, hindi mo na makita ang Pilipinas doon dahil natatakpan siya ng dinaanan ng bagyo. All of those are storm tracks. Okay? Tinignan namin yung pagbabago ng dami ng bagyo na pumapasok sa Philippine area of responsibility through time. Mukhang wala namang pagbabago sa dami. This is from the work of Pagasa. Ang nagbabago sa bagyo ay yung kanyang intensity. This is looking at the storms that form within the Pacific. And by looking at the storms generated within the Pacific, there is evidence that these storms have strengthened through time. Isang halimbawa, bali ng isang malakas na bagyo na dumaan sa Pilipinas ay ang Yolanda. Ito yung ng Yolanda, ang landfall bali niya ay sa Samar Leyte, sa Tacloban specifically. That resulted to the generation of a storm surge that is about 7 meters high. These are photos that we took one week after the storm surge. Ito yung damage bale ng storm surge sa Tacloban upper panel and Tanawan Leyte lower panel. Information on the height of the storm surge that passed through the area the numbers that you see there are in meters. You add to that the leap doon sa taas ng, ng lupa at sa dagat, lumalabas bale yung taas ng storm surge ay pitong metro. Seven meters high. And it's not the first time that that happened in Tacloban or in Tanawan. In 1897, 
Another storm surge of such mag magnitude passed through this area. Sa kaya sa barko, ito resulta ba lang ng storm surge na naka naka uh, dock sa anibong dinala ng storm surge itong barko na ito isinampas sa lupa. This is my last slide. Kung ikaw ay magpaplano, kung ikaw ay may gagawin tungkol sa facilities, dapat isama mo yung pagbabago na, na alam naman na natin kung ano. It's higher sea level, more intense rainfall, stronger wind. So you, we need to up upgrade and we need to renovate our existing ports. And if we are planning for new ports, we have to make the right choice of sites and the right design for the new ports. In anticipate pa lang ng ibang bansa yung impact ng climate change dito sa atin, nandyan na siya. And something that we need to contend with. Maraming salamat po.